Hey everybody, it's Marilyn Brown from Teach Marilyn B Style and I wanted to share my out school application demo video with you today along with six tips that I have for you um, to help you pass your very next application, whether it's your first or your 40th, I've got you. Um, okay, let's just go. Hello, junior zoologists. Yes, that's you. You are a zoologist today. A zoologist is a scientist who studies animals. Have you ever been to the zoo? Raise your hand. Yes, then you are a zoologist. Awesome, let me hear you say zoologist. Perfect. Today we're going to be exploring ocean animals, specifically the bottlenose dolphin. The bottlenose dolphin is one of the smaller whales in the ocean. Who here knew that a dolphin was a whale? Did anybody know that? It's true. There are actually two major categories of whales. One of them is called a toothed whale. I want you to try this really big word. Odontocet. Odontocet. Good. Yes. Okay. An odontocet is any whale that has teeth. The other types of whales are whales that don't have teeth. Yeah, they're called baleen whales. And they are the biggest animals in the entire world, even bigger than dinosaurs. Well, not this one. Okay, before we get started with our drawing today, we are gonna be using some big vocabulary words. So I wanna make sure we talk about all these words on this list, okay? The first thing we're gonna do is just practice saying them. So we're going to echo, read these. I will say it and then you say it after me. Let's say this big word one more time. Odontocete. Yes. Dorsal fin. Can you, put, can you put a dorsal fin on top of your head? Perfect. Okay, we're gonna come back to all of these words as we draw and learn about the bottlenose dolphin. Does everybody have their field notebook ready? You don't? Wait, do you have paper? Do you have a pencil? Good. And do you have a marker? Excellent. Okay, I'm going to be using a dry erase marker today, but you can use any kind of marker you want on your paper, okay? Let's get ready to study some bottlenose dolphins. Oh, I think I see one. Hang on a second. Take a look. Right here. Bottlenose dolphins are one of the smaller species of whales on the planet, but they are also one of the smartest. People are able to train bottlenose dolphins in captivity. Okay, everyone have your pencil ready? Or if you wanna go straight to marker, go for it. All right, let's get started with our drawing. Make sure your paper is turned horizontally, sideways, okay? Pencils or markers ready? Okay, great. A little bit off to the side, I want you to just draw a circle. Not too big, not too small. This is your dolphin's eye. We're gonna add a dorsal fin and a blowhole. A dorsal fin is that long fin right on a dolphin's back. Can anyone think of another animal that has a dorsal fin? Hmm. Yes, a oh, good one. Dolphins only have one blowhole. This is what allows them to breathe the air. Let's put it right in front of the dorsal fin. Instead of calling it a nose, we're gonna call this a beak. And it kind of looks like a sideways U. Okay, like the letter, like a v, between a V and a U. So a curved line this way, and then it kind of curves out on your way back up. How many flippers do dolphins have? Yes. Give me a thumbs up when you're ready for our next step. Okay, great, I see three thumbs up. There's the one more, all right. But we said this is a toothed whale. Where do dolphins have their teeth? In their mouth, yes. So we need to give our dolphin a mouth. 
So right here, give it a little smile. And we are all done drawing our dolphins. You can give yours eyelashes if you want to make it fancy. Thank you so much for learning all about bottlenose dolphins with me. I'll see you next time, junior zoologists. Bye. All right, you guys, now that you've had a chance to watch my video, there are some things that I would like to go over with you um, and just sort of unpack. Okay, I'm going to talk about this one in a little bit more in depth later on when I give you my tips, but I do have a Create Better Videos video on my YouTube channel, so please check that out if you're not sure how to utilize your phone as a camera um, or what technology you need or what things you can do to improve your video quality. So go check that out. It's pretty detailed. Um, and if you have any other questions on it, just leave a comment over there or shoot me an email. I also want to remind you to make sure to complete OutSchool 101 before you start trying to create your video. You'll have a better idea of what is expected on the platform. Um, so go through that entire application from start to finish. You can always click pause here and then come back to this video later. A couple things you might notice right out of the gate. I edited my video so that you can see kind of the beginning, middle, and end. Remember, my video is five minutes long. It does not need to be that long. I would, I would really recommend having sort of like the introduction portion, the main chunk of what your lesson might be, or like the highlights of it, and then a goodbye at the very end. And then I also kind of pretended that I was interacting with them. So make sure you kind of consider all of those things because there's gonna be a lot going on. You're not just gonna be talking the whole time, you're gonna have some response time. So pretend that there's somebody talking to you because that makes it seem like you know it's going to be more interactive. Um, practice this. Spend the time filming yourself. Uh, don't spend too much time, but spend some time practicing, whether in the mirror or into the camera, and then watch it back to see like, okay, is that really what I want it to look like? And if not, then just practice it a little bit more. You don't have to write out a word for word script because it's going to be really obvious if you're reading something off of a page. Um, you can write something out if that helps you process what you want to say, but what I would do, and actually what I did when I filmed it, it was like, honestly, I think it was like 11 o'clock at night or something, and I just like wrote a few little notes and decided I'm gonna do this thing and I'm gonna talk about these things. And I just wrote, it, wrote out a couple little outline bullet points to make sure I hit on those things, and then I just went. So you should be the expert in this. Okay, let's get on to my tips and I'll talk a little bit more about that. There are three that OutSchool lists on their website, things that you wanna pay attention to, so let me talk about those. Number one, you want to consider your teaching space. So when you film your video, you wanna have either a neat and tidy background that's maybe visually interesting or at the very least, just clean. You could just do it in front of a white wall and that's fine. I already have a teaching background because I'm a VIP kid teacher. So I already had an educational backdrop. Um, I have, let me insert a shot here of when I taught in front of my bookcase, what that looked like, and also in front of a Dollar Tree map tacked onto the wall. So there are a lot of really cheap and or free options. If you don't wanna spend any money before applying, I think that's totally fine. Yeah, I think that's totally fine. <laughs> All right, so consider your teaching space. The second thing you really wanna consider is your personality. Your video has to really show what your personality is like, what you're going to be like in class. So if you are bright and bubbly and animated, then just bring that to the nines. Whatever it is, you wanna bring your maximum energy, that's you. Don't try to be like anybody else. The thing that I think is really gonna drive this is the third area, which is your expertise. So when you consider how you want to formulate your out school classes, and remember, bonus tip right in here, whatever your demo video is, you don't have to be linked to that forever. Just think about right now, if you had to teach a class and you were the only expert in the room, you would like, yeah, I, I know all about spiders, or yeah, I know all about dinosaurs from the past. Well, well mine are all like, <laughs> obviously my favorite thing to talk about in front of people is animals, um, like you saw. But if it is um, you know, a math concept or a language arts concept, if you wanna talk about literature, what is it that you are an absolute expert in? Then focus on that, do that for your demo class. Um, so those are the three things that OutSchool has on their website. And I have some bonus tips for you. So number four is actually part of your application. It's the class description. When you write out that paragraph, you want it to sound just like it would if you were going to list it today. So go onto the website, there's a link right above it 
that allows you to click and see people's actual class descriptions. Um, all you have to do is log on as a parent with learners and um, just browse. Just browse through them, see which ones have the highest ratings, see which teachers have a ton of followers, and take a look at their class descriptions. See how they word it and think about how you can word yours to match the video that you want to film. Be really careful here because you don't wanna have any spelling mistakes or grammatical errors, so read over it really carefully. Maybe have somebody else read it. If you and I are linked because you were in my referral portal for OutSchool, send it over to me, I'll proofread it for you and send it back, or I can give different suggestions and feedback. If you are already linked to another OutSchool teacher, ask them, that's what they're there for, they're your resource. Um, otherwise, just ask somebody you know to look over it. I'm gonna go ahead and insert mine here so you can take a look and see what my class description said. I, I did exactly what I described. I looked through other teachers' material. I searched for kind of zoology aimed at this age group, kids that would wanna learn how to draw a cartoon dolphin. Tip number five, I want you to make sure you're considering how to create a good video. So I'm not gonna go through it in detail, but here is a link to my Create Better Videos video that I have on my YouTube channel. Um, it's got some really good tips in there just to kind of up your game and make your video stand out among the rest of the applicants. Now, obviously, you don't need to go out and buy any equipment. If you've got a smartphone that you're watching this on right now, then you've got the technology you need in order to film a great video. So just think about the lighting, think about where you're placing the camera. You want it at eye level or above because if you are sitting above your camera looking down, it's not a very flattering angle. Let's see, oh yeah, and then look into the lens. Oh, another tip that I have is if you're using your iPhone or Android to flip it around, don't use the selfie cam use the external camera because it's a higher quality video. Now it does need to be 100 megabytes or less. So if you wanna make a selfie video, you know what, honestly, I actually saw teacher introduction videos that looked not very great. Like I don't know that I would book a class with that teacher if that's what it looked like in the room they were teaching, but I know they probably just like submitted something and then never changed it. But then again, you know, they might've already been hired long ago and now they have like a client base and they don't need to update things. Um, but as a new teacher, you'll probably want to have the best quality that you can so that you will stand out. The other two suggestions that I have for you right now um, have to do with after you've been hired. I just want you to keep in mind that you don't have to pick a niche right now. Niche? Niche? Whatever. You don't have to pick the topic or area of expertise right now that you're going to teach on OutSchool forever. You can choose it for now and you can always change your mind. That is the beauty of this platform. You don't really have to decide everything from the get-go. There's so much room for flexibility, growth, change, whatever you want to tailor this to be the best experience for you as a teacher and your students. Finally, make sure you're willing to do a little bit of trial and error work here. I, I feel like a lot of people come into this and then get just so overwhelmed with the number of decisions that they're gonna have to make. Be willing be willing to step into that. If that's not for you, if you just need somebody to hand you a curriculum, then OutSchool is probably not for you unless you've taught our curriculum and you're really comfortable with that and you can basically adapt it into your own material. You obviously can't use copyrighted material. You're going to have to come up with all your own stuff. So it doesn't need to be fancy, okay? You really don't need to like hand create anything. Unless that like serves you as an educator, you don't have to do that. You can keep it as simple as you need to. But again, the entire process I feel like is going to just sort of be trial and error. You have to find what works best for you. All right, you guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me and checking out my demo video. I really hope that this helps you to pass um, on your very next try, whether it's your first or third or 30th. If you are determined to teach for out school, then that means that you've got passion about something you wanna teach to our students. So get out there, get filming, and if you need help, please reach out. Remember, if you don't have anybody to guide you through this process and you're willing to just resubmit your email, um, click the link below and it will link you into my portal, but then also send me an email so that I know you use my link. All right, you guys, thank you so much, and I hope that this helped. Please like and share this video with anybody you know who might be interested in OutSchool, and of course, subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you can see the next time I've got a video posted. Happy teaching.